It's Christmas Day, December 25th, white Christmas, and as predicted, it warmed up and started raining. It's been pouring down rain, and the wind's been blowing about 25, 30 miles an hour. Not quite that much here. I guess it's even stronger over where Judy's at. It said the high tide and the waves were breaking on the rocks down below the house and wash and clean up over the house or on the house. Even when the tide is high, they're probably 30 feet above the water there. Anyway, like I said, as predicted, it's raining. Carl came out yesterday evening and plowed snow. He didn't get all of it. He didn't get up to the house, but he got down here around the cabin and the driveway coming up the hill. And of course, uh, with the rain and what little snow was left on the ground and the really frozen hard ground, it's just like a skating rink here. Well, I'm just getting ready to go over to Judy's where she's staying at her friend's house and have Christmas dinner. I've got the pickup started and warmed up. So it's warmed up to about 40 degrees, 30, 38 degrees or so here with the rain. It's kind of funny seeing uh, the truck and the car is the same way where the snow is melted off of it and the rain's come down and you got icicles hanging off the front of the truck. But it's nice, a lot nicer at 40 degrees than it was at zero. So I've got to warm the truck up. I've got to back it up the hill here to the house. I've uh, got some packages, some uh, Christmas presents for my son and granddaughter up there in the basement and, and a few other things for dinner up there that I've got to go get out of the uh, pantry up in the house. So anyway, Merry Christmas. I'm a lot happier here than I would be stuck in a hotel room on the highway someplace. And hopefully anybody that's traveling by car, the weather got bad. Remember, it's a whole lot better to be stuck in a hotel or motel somewhere in some strange town than it is to be stuck in the hospital or trapped in your car somewhere waiting for rescue to come and get you out. And all the people stuck in airports, uh, again, same thing. I'd rather be stuck in an airport than piled up against a mountainside somewhere. So, Anyway, Merry Christmas, safe holidays, and Happy New Year to everybody. I'll see if I can get down this hill without sliding off the road on the other side there when I start down the hill. That thing is nasty looking. 29th of December and a nice day and it's just been different weather I guess. We haven't got a whole lot of moisture. Got a little skiff of snow yesterday and it warmed up a little bit and then it froze again problem of course is with the driveways all cleaned up but it's just down to bare ice and it uh, gets that water on top of it when it warms up and it just gets really slippery but the ground is still froze up hard so the water freezes again right down to the driveway well, I watched Mark come down the driveway the other day walking down and he slid most of the way down it on his stayed on his feet fortunately but it's treacherous going up and down there and then going down this driveway, that's pretty bad down there too. I had that cleaned up down to where the dirt was showing through it, but the uh, melting snow and everything here and the little snow we've had and the melting water we've had is froze on to the top of it, so it's just a glare of ice going down there. I started down it the day before yesterday and started going sideways before I could even get pointed down the driveway. And by the time I got to the bottom, I was 180 degrees pointed the other direction. Fortunately, didn't slide out into any traffic on the highway. But I'm going to see if I can work on that a little bit this afternoon. But first, I'm going to go on into AML. It's been a couple days since that man lift got here. And we looked at it yesterday. I took Judy to town yesterday for physical therapy, and we stopped by there. They've got it down off of the flat and down on the ground. So I'm going to go down and take a look at it. I bought that thing sight unseen, which is a stupid thing to do for something, well, for most anything, but especially something that costs that much. But don't have a heck of a lot of choice living out here in the tail end of nowhere. It cost me $5,000 or so to take the jet down to there and rent a car and a motel room and all that to go out to check the machinery out. And then uh, if you didn't like what you saw, then you'd have to come back and wait for the next time. And, I've been shopping for one of these machines for quite a while. 
come close to buying one a couple times. Things just didn't work out on it. Got this one, and it's a pretty reputable firm that was selling that. The thing is a rental where it comes off of its time as a rental, and they were selling it, and the company went through and inspected it pretty close. And I know that it's old and used. It's supposed to be in halfway decent shape, at least good enough for this old man to use. Oh, the thing that I am concerned about, I've got to go down and check out about, is that it came from the coast of Washington. And it doesn't exactly get cold down there like it does up here. So I'm going to go down and check the antifreeze in the machine. It's sitting there. I'm going to take some antifreeze with me and, and my tester and go down and test the coolant in the machine. Staying warm enough right now that it's probably good. The coolant is probably good, but if it gets down below zero again, you know, a lot of times people aren't setting machines up to, to go for that. So I'm going to go down there first and check on that, and then we'll come back and maybe scrape a little bit of ice and stuff and spread some ice melt on things and see if we can't get this ice to break up a little bit maybe. Coming down on AML here, getting ready to go into the yard to check on the machine. A little colder here in town, 32 degrees. It was 37 out at the place. So, anyway, the machine is parked right down here against the fence. And this lot is icy. Well, that doesn't look very big when you look at it from a distance here. Well, it must run because they drove it in there. looked good to start with and I looked in there because it was green and I tested it it tests down to 25 below zero so that's good I don't have to worry about that thing freezing up sitting here if it gets cold again we go ahead and look at it a little bit more Well, okay, that's good enough for now. It starts, oil pressure was good. It didn't run enough to show any water temperature. It didn't look like the battery was charging. Wonder whether the ammeter's not working or whether the battery's not charging, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. So the main thing I was worried about was the coolant level in there, how whether it was protected or not. So that's a 2003 machine, so it's 20 years old. It's had 20 years uh, use in a rental facility, so I don't expect a hell of a lot out of it, but the tires actually look better than they did in the pictures that they had. Uh, they had a video and pictures of it and stuff on the, on the uh, uh, auction site when I bought it. So anyway, all of that looks better than it did uh, actually in the pictures. So I'm happy with that. It's just a hell of a lot bigger machine than what I ex expected or what I wanted, but that's what we got. It was the right price. Okay, that's enough now. I'm going to go back home and start working at home there and see if I can get some of that ice cleaned up and get that driveway straightened up a little bit. Well, we're coming back home now. See if I can get up this driveway. Better stick it in four-wheel drive.
Made it. Well, I got home here, got things warmed up, got the Bobcat warmed up and fueled up the pickup. Now I've been working on scraping this ice down. I got over here in front of the cabin and, and down that way and I don't know whether I did any good or not. I scraped it, scraped and scraped on that and it's still got quite a bit of ice on it. And I went over here and worked on the driveway down to the highway. I scraped that down pretty good. Again, it's still icy, but it's better than it was. Starting now to work on the rest of this driveway. Got some down right here. This is in front of the shop, the sawmill going up to the house. That ice is just harder than the hubs of hell there. Pretty tough, I've got it down better than it was a little bit, but I don't know how much more I'm gonna be able to do. I'll move that car up out of the way and then uh, scrape some more of that. And then it started snowing. It's snowed about an inch since I started this project. So I was hoping it was going to warm up. The wind was blowing while it go and uh, it was a little bit warm. I thought maybe that would take this down a little bit. But with this snow on here, it's not going to help any. So and it's going to be dark here in a few minutes. It's getting dark early because the snow is coming down pretty good. Pretty thick overcast. So anyway, I'm going to move that car out of the way. Do a little bit more scraping on this. And, well, can't hurt anything anyway, even if it's not helping. December 30th today. One more day left in uh, 2022. A pretty nice day today. It's warmed up quite a bit. It's 37 degrees. It sprinkled a little bit. Well, I'm thankful I haven't had to shovel snow this year like we did last year. We've got maybe 8-10 inches on the ground right now that's melted down to that. We've had maybe a couple feet total. So the roofs haven't accumulated any snow, not enough to worry about shoveling off of them anyway. I plowed snow a few times here on the driveway, never very much at one time. I'm mainly just scraping the ice off of here. It's been so cold, the ground's froze up so hard that this ice builds up on the driveway and every place else. Well, I spent about three hours yesterday with the snow plow again with the bobcat scraping the ice trying to get it down. But just about the time I was in the middle of doing that, it started snowing and it was a wet, sloppy snow. Snowed about two inches maybe while I was plowing, uh, trying to scrape the ice down. So it didn't do much good. It uh, warmed up overnight and rained a little bit. And uh, the snow has just melted every place I had scraped down to the dirt. So like right here, right in front of us, I had it scraped down to the dirt. It's already got a glaze of ice on it. And the main thing I was working on was down here on the driveway coming up from the highway. I had that scraped down pretty good too, and that's just glazed over solid ice again from the rain and mountain snow. So I'm just kind of beating a dead horse by trying to scrape that off of there with the bobcat. I've done just about as much as I can with it right now. I'm not going to do it again today. I've got to go take my wife to physical therapy here in a little bit. So I just went out and took a bath. Need to go in and fix some breakfast and stuff. But well. It's early yet and it's war fairly warm. I'm going to throw some ice melt down on this ice and let it give it a chance to work through the day. It's supposed to stay warm today and tonight and tomorrow and then possibly snow again after that. I don't know, but I'm going to throw some ice melt down on here and see if I can get some of this ice to, to disappear here for a little bit. I did that once before and it came out pretty good, but then it just just glazed back over again. Do this and then I'll go in and get uh, a little breakfast and get dressed and then go get my wife. I spread tons of that stuff. 55, 60 years ago when I worked for my dad up in the woods, we used to spread it on the logging roads uh, in the winter time so we could keep them opened up, get the ice down off of them so the trucks could get down up and down the hill safely to haul logs, keep working all winter long. In this country, as soon as it snows or anything, they, everything pretty much comes to a halt. But it's so damp here and the snow is so slippery that it's just uh, not worth fighting with. I've made hundreds of miles of snow roads where we were able to work on top of the snow 
and pack it down and make roads out of it. And in the springtime or the summertime when the ice and snow melted out, you could never tell we were there. Last year we probably could have done that here. There was five or six feet of snow. Although it was mostly really cold and powder snow, it didn't pack very well. This year we don't really have enough snow to do that with. Anyway, it's time for me to go get dressed and get ready to go pick my wife up to take her to physical therapy. I don't know whether I'm going to have time to fix breakfast or not here now. but Well, it's about 5.30 p.m., December 31st, 2022, the last day of the year. And we worked till the last daylight hours of it. So it's warmed up a little bit from what it was. It must have been 34 degrees today, 35. It was drizzling a little bit, raining a little bit. And this ice here on top is melting and the snow's melting and but the ground still froze up hard. So it's still hard ice down here on the driveway and some of the water that was coming off the snow, off the hillsides and stuff is still freezing onto the driveway when it comes down. But it was a little bit soft on there from the snow we had the other day. Well, my son came over this afternoon and worked on it for an hour or so, scraping some of the loose stuff off. And this over here is the driveway going down to the highway. That actually looks pretty good. There's still ice in the ruts where the tires beat down, but mostly it's pretty good. Ice thinned down over here where I would put the ice melt on it yesterday and that looks a little better there it's still icy there but he scraped down up here going up to the house and that's better than it was he got the loose stuff off the top of it and the white stuff off the top of it but there's still two or three inches of ice up there on that driveway so but with it off maybe this rain will soften it up some more we can scrape on it some more uh, tomorrow if it softens up a little bit more again but anyway that's the last we're going to work on it this year well, I've been feeling like a real lazy, no good for nothing call around here. I haven't got much done for the last month. I ha haven't had that much snow to plow. We haven't had any to shovel this year. But running that bobcat just jiggles the crap out of my insides here. And it takes me two or three days to get over that every time I do it. So I've been trying to have my son uh, help as much as he could. Uh, he's learning and he's got a full-time job too so can't complain about what he does to help that's for sure he's been a big help here since my especially since my wife got hurt uh, taking care of the animals and stuff around here anyway i've puttered around a little bit here and there doing a few odds and ends but i really haven't felt like i've got anything done the last thing i was doing was trying to get this hangar straightened up so i get the airplane home and my friend there, he took his airplane down south to have it worked on. It was going to be gone a good portion of the winter. So we got the cub stuck in his hangar down there at the dock. And it kind of got lazy because of that. I guess among other things, not just because of that. But anyway, I hadn't been getting much done. I had that big planer sitting right here in the middle of the floor that I needed to get moved out of the way before we could get the airplane in here. And I had a plan on how to do that. First, I thought I was going to bring the bobcat in here and just move it and slide it over with the forks. But that uh, didn't work out when we got the snow and the ice and put the chains on the bobcat and stuff. And I did come up with a plan on how to move that. And we just got it done today. My friend Martin came over to tell me he wasn't going to come over and see me anymore this year. He didn't care to see my ugly face any again this year. So I roped him into giving me a hand. Actually, I couldn't turn him away. I had it figured out what to do. I lifted that edges of that pallet that that planer is on with a bar, and I stuck a couple of pipes underneath it. And then we got some 2 by 6s and raised it up some more and stuck underneath there uh, crossways and put some pipes underneath those, and then we were able to roll the planer over and get it over there where I wanted it, over where it's going to be out of the way. And uh, anyway... The two crippled up old men got that 1,600 pound machine moved without using any tools other than a bar. Anyway, that's pretty good. That's out of the way. And then I just got my metal cutting bandsaw and my wood cutting bandsaw is out of the way. You get a few things put or moved around here now and get this uh, door opened up and, and we'll be ready to bring that airplane home and get it in here out of the way. And I'll be able to get it out of the hangar down there and get it out of Scott's way down there. So. Hopefully that snow will go off of everything and the ice will go off the roads and stuff here to make it so that we can get it up here. 
So I got a few other things to putter around with here to, to get out of the way, but most of that is just shuffling things around now, which I'm good at shuffling things from one place to another. And that's the end of this year. That's the last project we're going to get done this year. Oh, I've got a couple of things over here. I went to change the ball joints on that pickup and I wound up borrowing a ball joint press. So then when I went south, I bought a new ball joint press and brought it home. I was putting it away and I found another brand new one back in the, in the shed there that I didn't know I had. So now I got two ball joint presses and I'm done with ball joints. So anyway, I'm going to put one of those up for sale. They've never been used. And then we have this Bristol stove. This is a stove we had in a boat that we had. It's a diesel uh, stove it, uh, used for both heating and cooking in boats and stuff. So uh, I'd rebuilt that and we put it in a boat and then we never run the boat very much before it got to the point where we wound up giving it away. So anyway, I've got the stove there. I can put it up for sale, get it out of here too. Uh, clean up a few other odds and ends and this place will be ready for an airplane again.